What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Well, yesterday we got some pretty big information around the PlayStation 5 and sales that are actually accelerating even faster than I was expecting that certainly puts the PS5 right back on track to overtake the PlayStation 4 and maybe even more than that. We'll go over all of that though here today. Also, we are going to be talking about a big time update for Nintendo Switch Online, bringing actually some pretty awesome titles to the service. And we'll also be going over that entire Indie World Showcase. While we didn't get the big reveal of Hollow Knight Silk Song, there are also some pretty interesting titles and also some interesting decisions when it came to the structure of the overall show. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, as we did find out the last piece of downloadable content, which was gonna be a sizable story update. And it looks like fans are getting just that, which we can see posted up over on Twitter from Nintendo of America saying, seize the future you desire in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, future redeemed coming April 25th, this original story scenario is available exclusively via Wave 4 of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Expansion Pass. Taking a look at some of the overview for this uh, expansion pack, saying, Set before the events of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 game, players join a cast of new and familiar characters in an original story scenario that connects all three installments in the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Future Redeemed also features new battle mechanics, such as Unity Combo, where two characters can attack in unison. I saw the Xenoblade fans out there get really excited and yeah, based on the tra trailer, it looks good. The only thing that was funny, some people bringing this up, it's pretty close to Tears of the Kingdom, which if they were trying to get all this stuff out in the first year, it was going to be close to it either way. So it, hey, in this case though, the 25th, next week you have two, maybe a little more than two weeks to get through it so you can be ready for uh, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Either way though, pretty good stuff here to close out that expansion pack for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Also, we did have reviews go live for Advanced Wars, which is out this week, and I'm pretty excited for this. I, I like them on the Game Boy Advance, and to see them brought up to the Switch with newer visuals and all of this, it, it, it's fun stuff, which we can see over on Metacritic, currently sitting at a score of 83. That's on 52. Critic reviews, we can see the positive at, at 47, and then the mixed at five different reviews. We take a look at PlaySense, they gave it a 90. Advanced Wars Tactical Gameplay proves timeless. 20 years after the release of the second game, playing both games is still enjoyable. On the other end of the spectrum though, The Enemy says that Reboot Camp rescues Advanced Wars brilliant gameplay formula from a 15 year hiatus, but does so without ever displaying any amount of ambition. So, hey, if you've never played the Advanced Wars games, it sounds like, yeah, this is the one to get, obviously. But if you've already played the ones in the Game Boy Advance, just understand that you're mostly getting those games again, but still, it looks like a lot of fun just seeing some of the, the gameplay clips that have gone up in the previews and reviews, so I'm picking this one up day one. Oh, and check this out. We've talked about file sizes for some of these games, maybe getting a bit smaller because of the SSD and some of the things that have been mentioned by Mark Cerny and even Xbox engineers. Well, at least in the case of one game, we're, we're going the opposite direction of what we all thought. And like, take a look at this. This is posted up by PlayStation Game Size. We now have confirmation when it comes to Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Before, we had seen on the PC, it was gonna come in at about 150 gigabytes. And we're like, all right, let's see what the console's coming at. The PlayStation 5 version, 147.577 gigabytes. Now on the Xbox, I, I saw it was about 140, 141 gigabytes. So. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure why Jedi Survivor is so large. The funny part though is we have these like Blu-ray discs that can hold a hundred gigabytes. And I saw that and I said, hey, you know what? We should be able to fit basically all these games on there without too much problem, not need a, a additional download outside of a day one patch. Not the case here, I, I guess. I, I don't know, Are they doing two Blu-ray discs in there. It's just, you install some of it and download the rest. Uh, that's just kind of the world we're in now. Even a hundred gigabyte disc, not enough to hold these games. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the PlayStation 5 sales and the MPD sales for the month of March, which we have a bunch of games and stuff to look at for the charts and a pretty shocking statistic actually. But first we can see this from Matt Piscatella with a nice thread that kind of summarizes everything here, but it does say that consumer spending on the video game content, hardware and accessories totaled 
$4.6 billion. That's a 5% decline when compared to a year ago. All of this, of course, in the United States. If we take a look at the top 20 games, which we'll go over the, the 10 at the top here, Resident Evil 4 did top the charts. Awesome to see that for a remake of a phenomenal game, clearly. Then Hogwarts Legacy still sticking in there, though, coming in at the number two slot. And will be the show 23 at three. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 still... Sticking around that top five, it was at the second spot, got kicked down to four, but that's just the, the strength of Call of Duty when it comes to sales in the U.S. Last of Us Part 1 coming in there at number five, FIFA 23 at six, WWE 2K23 in there at seven, Elden Ring at eight, Madden NFL 23 at nine, and then Mario, Mario Kart 8, which by the way... That just counts physical copies. It, you don't have digital data that they can go on for Nintendo. So that's just, those are just all the over-the-counter box sales for Mario Kart 8. Coming in at 10, because why not? It, who needs the next Mario Kart? We'll just sell 8 forever. Anyway, when it comes to the hardware, the PlayStation 5 was the leading platform when it comes to sales, both units and dollars. But it goes a bit further than that because the Switch and the Xbox did decline when it comes to overall sales, but the PlayStation sales were so great it actually pulled the entire hardware sector up with it. And we can see this posted up. It looks like it's actually run down the PlayStation 4 when you launch a line. At this according to Matt Piscatello says the PlayStation 5 hardware unit sales have now surpassed those of PlayStation 4 on a time-aligned basis. This uh going on the first 29 months in the market. So this is very, very impressive because, well, this is in the US specifically, but that, that being the basically the biggest market now for PlayStation. But the fact that they are running down the PS4 so quickly, I was not expecting that to happen this, I mean, this fast. I figured by the end of 2023, we'd have an indication if they would be able to catch the PlayStation 4 in a reasonable amount of time. It's just the, the shortage that they went through to kick off the generation really for the first year and a half it was pretty bad it started getting a bit better towards uh the end of that second year mark and now ps5 systems are all over the place i even talked about some of the scalpers and resellers who are selling their playstation 5s at what appear to be losses now oh i talked about that on the second channel going over even some examples because there are just so many ps5 systems out there and i gotta say right now while we do have something like spider-man 2 to look forward to sony's actually been very very quiet and in fact what they're relying on things like hogwarts legacy uh, final fantasy 16 but when you look at sony themselves first party development they had god of war ragnarok that was I mean, the end of last year right but otherwise spider-man 2 is the other game coming out this year and we're all thinking there's a showcase coming up in may what happens to console sales when they start showing off some other large titles to go along with Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine? That's that's the big thing there, because if they've caught up to the PS4, seems like they're about to springboard completely past that, maybe globally, before the end of this year. So the PS5 might end up being more successful in the long run, actually, than the PlayStation 4, and that's after Sony even raised prices on the system. Like I said, I don't think anyone really saw that coming, at least not this fast. So I'll be curious to keep an eye on things when we get results from Sony. That will be happening in the first week of May. So in two, two and a half weeks, and then we'll see if they really did set an all-time high or a record for them. Yes, with the PlayStation 5 sales in the first quarter, but potentially for just systems in general, in all of history. There's a lot of stuff to check out there when we get those results. Next up, let's talk about an update for the Nintendo Switch Online service, which it's very sporadic now. There might be Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance game, Nintendo 64, here's a Nintendo game, a Super Nintendo game, or a Sega Genesis game, maybe even a couple of those. And in fact, we can see this posted up by Nintendo. They have an entire trailer for these, these drops into the, uh, the Sega Genesis application, starting with Pulse Man. This is pretty cool because Pulse Man was only ever on the Sega channel. In fact, that was one of the most popular reproduction cartridges that people would talk about online because it was like that and Mega Man The Wily Wars. Those were like the two big ones. But Pulse Man is a very interesting title to go into the Nintendo Switch Online service because it's actually developed by Game Freak. And to me, it's, it's one of their better games that's not Pokemon. So yeah, I completely recommend checking that one out. It's a fun 
drop, I would say, into the into the service. Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition. Always good to get more fighting games into the service. And I have been notified that uh, I received a challenge here for Street Fighter 2, that from RGT when he was going over these different games. It's very strange to me because Street Fighter 6 is coming up. I don't really know why he didn't challenge me to that. Instead, he waited for Street Fighter 2 from the Genesis to come to the Switch, but... I guess that's what you expect from your local Nintendo YouTuber there. Then we have Kid Chameleon. Never really got into Kid Chameleon, but uh, I might check it out to see because people do talk very fondly about it. Then we have Flicky to round out the four games. So overall, I would say a pretty good update for the Sega Genesis application with, to me, Pulse Man being the big standout. And whenever I see these different games get brought up from the Sega channel, I, I get a lot of nostalgia for it. It was it was a cool service, a cool thing to get. They would then plug your, like, your cable uh, you would plug the, the into your cable jack and then it would feed different games to it. But some games were actually too large, I feel like, for the cartridge to hold at any one point since it had to stream the information to it and you had to sit there and wait. So Mortal Kombat 3, from what I remember, there were two parts because they couldn't have all the characters in, in one version. But really cool to see Pulse Man there and sure, more fighting games like Street Fighter 2. They're available now, so go ahead and check them out on that application. Next up, let's talk about that Indie World Showcase that took place yesterday. And unfortunately, there was no big Hollow Knight Silk Song reveal, but one of the games I did mention yesterday was there and it got a release date. But first, we'll go over everything that was announced here and we can take a look at some of the indie world as we go along. Starting at the top here with uh, with Manico Night Market, that's September 26th. We have My Time at Sandrock, that's summer 2023. Played Up, that's October 2023. Quilts and Cats of Calico, Fall 2023. And then we had Rift of the Necro Dancer. That's 2023. That one did catch my eye because I did like what they did with the Crypt of the Necro Dancer. And then uh, obviously they had the, the big Nintendo Legend of Zelda kind of crossover for that. Uh, but that it still kind of played into the rhythm, almost action adventure sort of gameplay. So might be worth checking out there. A little to the left, Cupboards and Drawers. That's a DLC for the indie title is June 2023. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon Puzzlers Pack DLC, Spring 2023. And then Cult of the Lamb, Relics of the Old Faith Update, April 24th, 2023. Interesting, we had like a little DLC update section in the indie world now. Animal Well, okay, this was an interesting one. First, that's Winter 2023. This, I guess, is Donkey's publishing arm for games. And he was in the video alongside the developer for Animal Well and... Obviously, he was just there as an appearance, you know, like, hey, look, I'm Donkey, I'm here alongside of the developer of Animal Well, and then he decided to kind of jump around on some rocks in the the water behind him. I, hey, sure, whatever works to kind of pitch the game a bit more there. Uh, then we have Crime O'Clock, June 30th, 2023. Tesla Grad 2, April 19th, 2023, it's out right now. Shadows Over Loathing, that's also out right now. Blasphemous 2, this was pretty cool because I did like the first Blasphemous, so just to see a follow-up here with some new mechanics and stuff, that's summer 2023. Oxen Free 2 Lost Signals. This was a big one. We've already seen this announced, but now we have the release date, July 12th, 2023. Also a little controversy around this one because there is no Xbox version, but it is from Netflix. So that that kind of explains it a bit because Netflix and Xbox with their subscription services technically are in direct competition. So Netflix will have reasons to not put things on Xbox if they can help it. It is going to Netflix though. So if you have a mobile if you have a mobile phone or device you play games on, if you have the app for Netflix and a subscription, you can technically play it there. A Paper Trail, August 2023. Little Kitty Big City, that's uh, 2024. Chance of Sonar, that's September 5th, 2023. Brotado, that's 2023. Escape Academy, the Complete Edition, Autumn 2023. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, April 19th, 2023. It's out now. And then Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. August 18th, 2023. So structurally, this was kind of strange because it seemed like the sizzle reel at the end had most of the focus from press because it had it had Five Nights at Freddy's and it had Bomb Rush in there. One shadow drop and the other one getting a release date, which is something I, I mentioned yesterday. It'd be really cool to see Bomb Rush Cyber Funk get that release date. It coming now in August. Seems like something you would have maybe put towards the beginning of the presentation 
bump the the quilting game maybe into the sizzle re I I, I guess, but either way, we got all this information. You can look back on it now, and I will leave a link to Nintendo Life. It did a pretty good write-up with everything announced, just in case you wanted to get more information about any one of these announcements. But overall, the indie world, it, maybe it just wasn't for me. I just didn't have a lot of announcements there that got me really, really excited. Oxen Free too. I know there is a, a following for that one, but otherwise, having some of the stuff buried in the sizzle reel that I probably would have been interested in, like Bomb Rush, kind of threw me through a, a loop there, but certainly a lot of creative and unique titles here. And that's kind of what I was expecting going into it. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about some unfortunate events that happened yesterday as we started to get news that there were layoffs at Meta, specifically though, Ready at Dawn. And this is something that people were concerned about when Meta purchased Ready at Dawn in 2020, and they moved them over to work on virtual reality titles, as you would expect for their Quest headsets. But it appears now because they did things like close down a very popular title that they were developing for on the quest that I guess they're just falling into that list of people we can cut out here as they look to lean down, which we can see this posted up over on Twitter. This is from Thomas says, meanwhile, they laid off one third of ready at dawn today. And there are several tweets right now on Twitter of people who did work at Ready at Dawn explaining that, that yeah, I'm, I'm out. And some have even said, you know, I, I just, I don't want to work in VR ever again. But I, I guess in this sense, they shouldn't be too hard, I would assume, for them to find work right now because a lot of larger publishers are, are really looking for talent to continue building up uh, overall studios. But still, the unfortunate thing here, I, I feel like, is this is a a big what if scenario for a studio like Ready at Dawn while obviously getting purchased by Meta was probably good at the time because it's it's hard to say the future of a studio that's out there trying to make these, I guess, second party deals or just deals with publishers you don't who don't own you or anything. Uh, but what if in the future we could have seen Ready at Dawn work again with Sony like they had been doing in the past and not necessarily do a follow-up to the Order 1886, but maybe just do a different game, but taking what they learned there and continue to build on it. Or I guess at this point, if Sony had acquired them because they had worked so closely with them before that, but maybe the Order 1886 really put Sony off. And in that case, Meta looked at them and said, wow, they have a lot of experience with VR. Let's pick them up. But things have not been going well for the Metaverse, VR, meta in general and yeah they're laying off a lot of people maybe like eleven thousand or so and ready at dawn is just kind of fitting into them slimming down their overall personnel count so it's unfortunate i'm hoping that ready at dawn is still around going forward because if they cut off a third then another third and then they keep cutting down and eventually we just hear that there's been a quiet closure of a studio at meta it ends up being Ready at Dawn. So I guess we'll see going forward, but yeah, unfortunate stuff here to see Ready at Dawn, see these kind of layoffs at Meta. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, give the Indie World presentation a grade. It's like C was the leading grade there at 46%. And then we have F at 18%, then B 17%, D at 13% and A at 5%. I guess looking at the presentation, I can see how many people were going through it and there's like, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of unique titles here, things I haven't seen before, but nothing that's really jumping off the screen. I'm like, I, I gotta have that title. Hey, unless you were a big fan of the, the first Oxen Free and you were looking forward to seeing a release date there, or hey, so we, we have Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That, that could be cool, but nothing big time that maybe could have even saved it. Like, if at the end of all of this, Hollow Knight Silk Song was revealed and here's the release date, or hey, it's out right now, all of a sudden, I feel like a lot of votes would have gone towards B and A, but without something like that, yeah, it's gonna be kind of middling for a lot of people. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Billy Bob says, you should just dedicate part of the daily show to Xbox controversies and mess ups. It's on every episode, every day anyway, there in Dreamcast spiral mode. You know, I've been seeing this a lot recently online. Man, the, the Xbox, Xbox in general hasn't had a great couple of weeks for PR, but it just kind of feels like the attitude in general from people towards Xbox is, is different now than even before when they were kind of messing up and it's like, that's, that's Xbox, they'll get it right eventually. It seems like there is a serious, I guess, I guess confidence has been shaken seriously right now online with them. So I'm really hoping that Arcane shows up with a good title in Redfall. I, I know the 30 FPS thing is a sticking point. 
I'll probably just play it on PC right now and wait for that 60 FPS patch on consoles to check that one out really. But even beyond that, they have their showcase coming up in June. I know that's generally what people say, oh, E3's coming up, they'll set it right then. But I feel like a lot is riding more than ever on this June presentation from them. Because remember, it's also gonna be anchored by Starfield, which is the big game that people are really looking at. Like, okay, this is gonna be the one for Xbox. So it's it's tough right now for Xbox overall and Microsoft. Hey, they'll, I, I assume, be acquiring Activision Blizzard. That'll be a boost for them. And then maybe they can start getting some of these games out there that really hit hard for a critical reception. They can get back on track, but it's, uh, it's rough right now in the present for Xbox and Microsoft. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether it's the PlayStation 5 sales that we're hearing about with it now catching up and even surpassing the PlayStation 4 in the US. Do you think when it's all said and done, the PS5 will pass the PlayStation 4's lifetime sales? And then also, what about that Nintendo Switch Online update for the Sega Genesis? Did you get any nostalgia trips from seeing things like Pulse Man or Street Fighter 2? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.